Okay, today I'm going to be showing you how to change a receptacle to be the new tamper resistant type of receptacle. The first thing to do is to make sure the power is off. So I went in the basement, this was glowing when I went downstairs, flipped the circuit, no longer glowing. So you think that the whole receptacle is dead. But that's not always the case. So you can see if I plug into the top of the receptacle, I have a glowing light that shows that this box is hot. So if I was to get in here and start doing the wires, I could zap myself. So what happened is, if you look at the side of a receptacle, there's a little brass there and there. And if you snap off these tabs on either side, that isolates these two things. That's how the current gets from the top to the bottom. So if you snap these, that's how you do light, light switches or sometimes how kitchens are wired. So to be safe, make sure that you test both the top and the bottom receptacle. Because even though one's off, the other one could be on a separate circuit. Okay, we'll be fast forwarding through some of this, but what we are going to do is I'm going to take this one out, put in the tamper resistant one. Um, what you'll notice, I'm going to put it in what looks like upside down, and here's why. If you have a metal plate, and please don't have a metal plate, but they exist, and this happened to my college roommate when I in college, the screw was missing, we went to unplug, and it fell, and it bridged right there and caused an arc. If you flip this upside down and do something similar, and you have this plugged in, and it falls, it's going to hit the ground first. Now obviously with a two wire that doesn't work, but with a three prong plug, it's going to hit the ground pole, and you're not going to get a sh short right there. So we managed to kill um, pretty much the whole corridor, plus the metal plate fused to our lamp. So it was um, not good. So if these are installed upside down, that's actually correct. The other thing we're going to do is if you can zoom in on this one, this is how receptacles are usually wired. You have your ground, pigtailed in, the hot comes into one side, actually here's the hot, it's always black, red, any color other than white or the green, um, or just bare copper, that's ground. So the hot's coming in, and then going out, and then the return of the neutrals to white, and that's it. But that means if I plug in down here, the current's going through this whole receptacle. If I get like a loose connection here, every single other outlet also dies. So I'm going to show you how to wire with pigtails, which takes a little bit longer, but it's a little bit better. So the first thing I have to do is unscrew this, and we'll probably end up fast forwarding. Okay, now instead of unscrewing and reusing this loop, I'm going to actually want to be stripping wire back, and I don't want to unbend this because that makes it more brittle. So you don't want to bend copper back and forth, or eventually it's just going to snap. So I'm just going to take my linesman's pliers and cut right through the wire. Here's the old outlet cut free. Now this one isn't tamper resistant, so you can just, little kids can come through and just put metal in and electrocute themselves and that's bad. The new tamper resistant ones, you can't insert thing neither to the long socket, which is the return, or the short one, which is the hot, unless you put equal pressure simultaneously on both sides. So you, there's a lot less chance of paper clips or coins going into the circuit with the two-year-old wandering around in the house. So much safer, plus we're going to put it upside down, so there's less chance of um, anything bridging the hot and the return. So the next thing I'm going to do, if you can zoom in here, you can see that there's three copper wires. These are going to the in and the out, and this one was connected to our previous receptacle. What we're going to do is the exact same idea with both the hot and the neutral. So we're going to attach a third wire and then a wire nut, so that way you don't have every, the current can just go right through here without going through the receptacle if you don't have anything plugged in. So I'm going to strip about an inch of wire off, 
of all of these, cut some wire off, pigtail it in, and then attach everything. So the strip wire, this is all, the yellow means that it's 12 gauge, white wire is usually 14 gauge. On the wire stripper it has the number, so I'm just going to go in, pinch, and pull. I'm going to want it a little bit longer than that because I'm going to end up trimming it after I twist the wires together. So it fits under the wire nut, it doesn't come off. You can also do electrical tape when you're completely done to make it even more foolproof. And I'll get, we'll pause the tape while I strip all these wires. Alright, now I have to get the black and the white wires out of this yellow cable. Now there is this yellow cable or jackets, also called a sheath. There are sheath strippers, but if you don't do a lot of electrical work, it's probably not worth buying. Um, Linesman suppliers are strong enough just to cut right through that. Now make sure you're doing this on a board. I'm wearing gloves just to be extra careful. Now when they do these wires, the black and the white are on the outsides and the copper is down the middle. So you want to make sure as you run your utility knife down, one, be careful, and two, if you stay in the middle, you're only going to hit the bare copper, you're not going to wreck any of the insulation. So you just carefully cut down the middle of the jacket. And then you can pull the wires right out. So I have my black, my hot, my white, which is my return or neutral, and then my ground wire, which was in the middle. Now I'm going to strip about an inch off of either side of the black and the white, except on the back, there's a little gauge that you probably won't be able to see that tells you how long to make your loop. So here I can measure it right there and see how long. There's also places to push in the back, but don't use those. They're way too easily come disconnected according to everything I've read. So use the ones on the side. Sometimes they have slip ones that you can push in the back and screw down. Those are okay, but just these little quick wire things, you don't want to use those. So again, we've got our ground. Our, the silver screws are our white or our return. The brass screws are your hot. Okay, so I've stripped the white wire. I'm going to put a loop in one side using needle nose pliers. It's going to go around the screw, which is always a challenge. Um, I've started using a clamp to hold these when I pigtail. It's not always really easy, but you want to get these kind of lined up. And this might not work as well as I thought. It's from the front. So I get these lined up, I put my linesman pliers straight on, and then I can twist the wires together. Now this just, the wire nut would keep everything, you don't really have to do this, but it just, there's no way that this is going to come loose anymore. It's just incredibly tight, and then what I do is I just trim it off so I can get the wire nut. Um, I grab the appropriate wire nut, and you just twist on clockwise. So I always do my pigtailing with the lines with pliers clockwise as well, so that way it's going, not going to loosen your pigtail. It's going to tighten it up. So now later I'm going to fold this as carefully as I can into this box. They're never big enough. I've got a really small box, a medium box, a medium box, and a large box. The large box is like 59 cents rather than 39 cents. You can figure out how to get a large box on the wall. If you're doing new construction or something like that, always buy the largest box you can. Um, I'm going to do the exact same thing with the black wire now. So I go and I put a little bend 
for the screw. I get my black wires together. Go straight on with the linesman pliers. You gotta figure out a way to hold these. You can use pliers, but that sometimes dings the insulation. And just start twisting. So not quite as pretty. I generally try not to twist back into the insulation, but but it's not going to be coming apart any time. And we get another wire nut on. Now on this one, you can see just a bare amount of wire. It's not quite as nice as I would like. Now I'm going to be a little paranoid. Get decent electrician's tape. You don't want to get um, just something out of the dollar store. There's like Scott's makes, I think it's called the Super 77, things that are rated to really high temperatures. And if you just give this, and this is really going to guarantee you don't get a short, it's not going to get loose. Um, should probably be wearing gloves. Some electricians will also wrap the whole body if you have a metal case, but with plastic it doesn't really matter. So now, I'm going to be doing this, what looks like upside down, so the white wire needs to be over here, the black wire needs to be over here, and the ground's going to be up high. So I'm going to tuck the wires into the box as best I can. Put a little loop on the ground. So just kind of fold them up. I'm putting the brass or the copper towards the top of the box, the white's bottom right. I'm going to fold up the black bottom left and along the side. Let's still give myself enough room. Um, I'm going to connect top and top, so ahead of time I'm just going to twist down these two screws so they're just not sticking out. Um, you want to be somewhat neat with electrical, but at the same time you can't like put all the electrical, if you put too many wires together, the heat builds up. So sometimes it looks pretty ugly in your basement because there's all these holes running through your floor joists. But if you were to do it in one big bundle, you're actually creating a fire hazard. So now, kind of slip on the white screw. Okay, and pretty good. We can kind of adjust it as we screw it down. I'll make sure it's between the tabs. Okay, let's pull down nice and tight, it's not going anywhere. Same idea, the black wire. And then we need to put the grounding screw on green. Now some electricians will always work as much as they can with one hand. I'm not good enough, I'm just a hobbyist. But that way, if you did get electrocuted, it goes down your arm, down your leg, and out. It's if it ever goes across your hands, it's actually getting close to your heart. And um, that's bad. So now I have it installed where it looks upside down, but that's actually the correct way to do it. Both weights are colored, but this is just a little bit better. And I'm just going to screw these two down 